chopping wood. I've worked in my shop. I cleaned up my garage, took, tinkered with my cars. In the last few days, I started ripping my deck apart. And uh, just because there were some things I didn't like about it, I want to change the floor. And one thing leads to another, and I've practically taken it down, and I'm going to redo it. I still have all the floor structures, so it's not like i got to go get a permit and change things. But I'm just going to change the look of it. And you know what? I have the time. Since I'm at home, what else am I doing? As a matter of fact, we've asked all kinds of people out there, what are you doing at home? Is there anything you're working on in your house? We have some pictures, and we're going to take a look. Okay, somebody built a, oh, that's pretty cute. That's a foot wash station, I'm pretty sure. That's David Jones. Uh, let's see, a food cleaner made out of two broom heads. Reuse the wood, spray paint from who knows when, and squash garbage pail for steel edges. You know what, that's pretty smart, especially if you have muck in your area. You can keep yourself uh, clean, especially your boots. Not bad at all. Now, somebody's done a kitchen here. Is that what I'm seeing? Hmm. Okay, this is from Megan. My husband built my dream pantry for me. He's very talented. Okay, anytime the husband, you know, does some things for the wives at home, especially what they really like, you get all those wonderful bonus points. And these are usually good for the relationship, especially being quarantined and sort of stuck together. I hope everyone's having a lot of fun, drinking some wine, lighting a fire here and there, and probably watching a whole lot of Netflix. Any more pictures here? Okay, this one here, that looks pretty cool. What is that? All right, his name is Mike. I built a bar out of some discarded pallets. Now that's not a bad idea. I remember one of the shows we did on the Handyman Challenge that we brought in truckloads of skids and they had to build, you know, one of those great little cabanas outside in the backyard. And there were some great, great finishes there. I kind of like those things. Anyone else? Now that looks like somebody's made a deck. This is from Bill, what I made from used skids and leftovers around the garage. So he made a doghouse, a little bit of a, a deck. Hey, not bad at the back of the garage and or workshop. That's actually pretty cool. Waste not, want not. We don't have to throw it to landfill. It kind of makes sense to use it. I do like that personally. Now today we're gonna to be talking about a few things. We're gonna be talking about electrical. We're gonna be talking about Something that really bothers me, a homeowner that was totally taken advantage of by a contractor recently, and uh, we're going to get into that one real soon. We're going to be talking to Frank and a bunch of electrical issues, show some photos. But first, we have Allison Victoria from Rock the Block. I worked with her in the United States. It was a really good show. Hey, how'd that show do, Allison? Uh, I thought it was really great. I know the ratings were great. I was made to look like the uh, villain, but that's okay. <laughs> what is it like, Housewives? Or I'm <laughs> just kidding. I don't watch. Like, it was so funny because all of us got along so well, but they the minute that you you know you show up for a competition show and you are competitive, and that makes you the bad guy. Well, right? as far as I'm concerned, you were the good guy. Uh, well, it, it was, you. I had a lot of fun being there. Um, you know, I get to be me, look around, make my judgment yeah. points. And your designs were incredible. I uh, I look forward to doing that again. Actually, something tells yes. me. Yes, I know they're coming back for season two. So it was just great to work with you. Okay, now we we put out a request to a bunch of uh, well, we'll say viewers out there that uh, about designs in the kitchen. You're going to come back next week and you're going to help me. Is that correct? I am. So the, what the challenge is? Anyone out there that wants some help from Allison about how your kitchen should look. Send us some pictures. We're going to be looking at them all week. Allison's going to be coming back next week. And you're going to give some professional advice. Yes, I can't what, wait. What have you been working on? So we're actually still filming my season two of Windy City Rehab. And it's just hard because construction in Illinois is still essential, but filming is not. So I know. it's just trying to, just like you know, I mean, we're just trying to get crafty, trying to, uh, you know, capture anything we can with GoPros, uh, doing a lot of fun stuff like this Facebook Live with you, and then working on a new project with HGTV. Um, so we're doing all kinds of things. We're just trying to kind of go with the flow and, you know, evolve with this new digital platform that everybody wants and needs right now. I mean, 
you got to admit, like being stuck at home makes you appreciate home more than ever right now. Well, you got what are you going to do? You're going to cook in the kitchen. You're going to work in the backyard. You, you know, you, there's only so many things to do. And then you get tired and then you sit in front of the computer and you get to watch people like us talking. It kind of works. Did you watch that global thing the other night? I didn't. I haven't been watching a lot of TV. I actually like, I turn it on maybe once in a while. So I've been keeping busy and trying to do other things that I never get to do. Read, finish books that I've started, you know, and just kind of actually catch up on, on sleep and everything. So it's been nice. Well, I don't know about you, but I haven't had a vacation since I was probably three years old. And uh, I don't know, I'm exaggerating, but it's quite true, actually. I'm on a forced vacation and, and I didn't like it. I saw it coming. I thought, oh no, we're going to get shut down. All production got shut down everywhere in the, as far yeah. as I was in the world. And uh, it happened. I was filming in Vancouver for two and a half months. Boom, I fly back. And I just, I looked at this and went, oh, this is crazy. This is why stop, we can do this. Okay, in the long run, I get it. I understand it's about safety. It is about being home. Something happened that I didn't expect. I thought I was gonna be bored like crazy. I was a little bored, but I kept, I keep myself busy. I bet you do. I have been, I haven't been this relaxed in so long. It, it's It's incredible. I'm healthy, I feel good, I'm eating good. I'm sleeping good. Everything seems to be wonderful. But honestly, I can't make it back to you. Well, I'm just happy to hear that because I think like, you know, for people like you or me, they're flying constantly or filming constantly. Go, go, go. Our lives are always that kind of, I got to do this. I got to do that. Got to, got to, got to, got to. And so when you are forced to actually stop and pause with the rest of the world, like I've never been more, I know when people ask, how are you? I say, I'm great. And it's all relative. I'm healthy. My family's healthy, but I've just never been happier to be home and just like enjoy it. It's kind of okay, isn't it? It is. I'm with you. I, I was struggling in the beginning, but I. I have one big problem. All the marinas are closed, and my boat was supposed to go in the water April 9th, and my boat won't go in the water. Like, I am stuck here. I can't go to my boat, which would be safe, and go, you know, all around Lake Ontario with my boat. No. Nobody can work. So I don't know when that's going to happen. I'm assuming about a month. But until then, and when I got to go back to Vancouver, something tells me this is going to be coinciding where my boat goes in the water. I jump on a plane and I go back to work and miss my happen. boat for at least another month. Oh, because you know that's going to happen. The minute that they open those gates, we are just back to work. And it's it's like, but also it's great that you're able to do this Facebook Live right when I heard about it, it was awesome. And there's also something that I just wanted to throw out there that it's if, if people out there, any of your viewers are watching, if they want to have um, a host from HGTV help them design one of their spaces that they can email videos and photos and everything to design at your door one at gmail.com. So it's a new thing that's going on. I kind of like this. Why not? Yeah. This is busy at home. And thank you for helping everyone else. I'm looking forward to talking to you next week. And everyone that's going to send in those pictures, because we need to look at this and give some advice. I think between the two of us, more design from Allison, maybe a little more, mm, you know me, structured, don't do this, don't do that. And we'll talk next week. So good talking to you. Good talking to you. Good seeing you. And I will see you and whoever that lucky homeowner is next week. Let's play. Okay. Bye, guys. All right, everyone. That was fun. Allison Victoria, She uh, she's really good. I, I, when I was filming Rock the Block in the United States, I didn't know really what I was going into. They phoned me on the phone. Mike, can you come be a judge? You know, there's a bunch of women here doing designers. I really didn't know any of them. And I flew down. Uh, again, didn't know. I walked the streets. And they were telling me what was happening. And then, boom, the cameras came out. And away we went. And it's easy to be me. I don't have to act. So I just went with it. And I really had a lot of fun shooting that. I'm looking forward to even playing that one again because I have a funny feeling a lot of people like that. Right now, we're going to be talking about electrical. I've got Frank Cosolino. Everyone knows Frank. We've got him online. And we're going to be showing a clip from one of our shows. How are you doing, Frank? Pretty good. Yourself? I'm pretty good. I want to show this clip first, and we're going to get in a little bit of electrical talk, and then I've got a favor I'm going to be asking you. But hold on, let's watch this video. 
and he put in pot lights All the here. pot lights here. So I brought in my electricians. I said, do me a favor, run through the house, take a look. When they turned off the one circuit, guess how many lights went off on one circuit? 50. <laughs> You're only allowed 12. Oh my gosh. Devices per circuit. We have codes for a reason. Okay, so uh, Frank, you're used to this. I'm so used to this. Whenever you bring in a bad guy, it seems everything that touches wrong. Now, in electrical, it's supposed to be minimum code, both Canada, United States, 12 devices per circuit. Correct. That's really to control it. Never overload the breaker. Uh, long run, you don't want to run the wires that long neither. So everything's done for a reason. Something has changed in the code about this. Is that correct? That's correct. So if, you, if you've got LED pot lights and you're planning on using the LED, we can use what's called known load. Um, the code's always been there, but they've relaxed it a little because it used to be that if it was only lighting, you can use known load. Nowadays, they're saying under a renovation, you're removing one light fixture and you're going to replace it with four pot lights or even five. An LED pot light that would only consume 10 watts would still be less than that incandescent light bulb that would be 60 or even a 40 watt or some people may use a 100 watt bulb so the code is relaxed a little bit that way knowing that they're you know using now, that that's, that's only on a pot light is that correct only on a pot light yes so but they have the led surface light standard light is going to be 12 devices per circuit correct now, how many so you're saying it's not based on watts so how many led pot lights based on 10 watts i know there's some less watts but let's base it on 10 watts how many lights can I run on one circuit? 1,400, 1,460 watts on a 15 amp circuit. Okay. So you can use 145. I got to uh, do the math. 145. Okay. Is, is that kind of pushing it a little too far? Well, again, it comes down to wattage. If you're only consuming 140, you're, if you're only consuming, uh, you know, the known load, it's under the 15 amps. The breaker's not going to trip. You're not going to be overheating. Can you have issues with dimmers? Yes. Uh, you can have many other issues. I wouldn't suggest putting 145 pot lights on one switch in a home. Um, it's a pretty big home. I'd be using some smart controls for that. Yeah, it would have to be like a 10,000 square foot home. Here's my point for this one that uh, I don't know if I like this at all is that what that does is creates the opportunity to say, I've heard this, Frank told me this, this code, I'm allowed to put up 140 pot lights based on 10 watts. Now let's remember, each and every circuit is approximately 1800 watts before to blow the breaker, is that correct? Yes, but you can only, you can only use up to 80% of that right. 1800 watts. Right, which makes sense, because that way we're not maxing out. And if you never want to max, it's going to heat up the lines, et cetera. Having that many pot lights, what it's going to do, to, in my mind, it's going to tend to make people think that, well, if I can do this, I can do that. What it does is it steps outside what we're normally doing. And you know me, I'm, 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 I'm the guy that says you can't teach an old dog new tricks, which we should be, and that we should have changes within code, our value. I can go on and on and on, but that's another subject. I don't know if this is wise. I think it would be better to say, based on the 10 watts rather than 1,460 pot lights to be exact, I think you can say maybe 20, right? Like give it a limit that makes sense because maybe there is 20 pot lights in one room or maybe 25, 26, because it's usually an even number yeah. and not an odd number. But that would make more sense to me uh, based on per room or something. So maybe there's, is this, this is something you keep doing. You talk about code with all the big people out there to see what changes can be done and what, what makes sense. Is that right? That's correct. Yep, that is. What I'd always say is if you're doing a renovation and you're planning on doing it yourself, you're pulling out an electrical permit, I hope. And if you are pulling out the permit, then just talk to your inspector. They're I, want to talk, I want to talk about that. Sure. Now, that. That video we showed, that contractor stole their money. He conned them. He told them, he told everyone. He, he leaned their house. He sued them afterwards. And I mean, this guy should go to jail. As far as I'm concerned, I've had it up to here. I don't, there's no police force out there, nothing out there well, that saves people from this happening to them. The changes are coming. So it depends on where. There's lots of good changes coming, especially I, in the area that I'm in. In electrical, 
things. And that's the point that they can be fined up to $50,000 here in Canada. I know the states are working on it. Have they gotten there yet? No, they haven't as of yet. Okay, but remember, well. it goes state by state. So you may end up having, you know, the state of Illinois, for argument's sake, that may already have tight rules. And then in New York, they haven't. So it goes state by state. Same thing here in Canada, where they go province by province. The province of Ontario is very, very tough. And uh, I think they need to be tougher. So good on them. Agreed. And there should be consequences for when you not only do Definitely. things wrong, but you actually affect the family's financial future terribly. Yes. Because you're not a good person. I said it. Because I spoke to the ESI, ESA guy. He's the electrical safety authority. He came in. I told him all about him. I said, please go after him. Please find him. You have the legal right to do this. Did he? It didn't happen? Not that I know of, no. It doesn't come back to me. When, when ESA decides to investigate on someone, they do that and it becomes... You know, they can't share that information. So I wouldn't know what well, we actually don't that. know. Sorry? We actually don't know. We don't, yes. Okay, all right. right. I mean, I mean, that's probably better than anything. I just hope to hell that he got a big fine. He got a kick in the rear end is what he, he totally means. Mm -hmm. And it leaves these people alone. I'm going to speak to them again, and we'll find out more about that in the future. Any tips right now? Okay, any tips right now you want to offer to people that can work at home? Well, uh, again, it, Electrical is not a hobby. So I say that all the time. So if you know what you're doing, good. If you're a jack of all trades, good. Um, pull out the permits. They're there to protect you. You know, it's it's people that are doing things and they're not within the code. Like code's bare minimum. You talk about this all the time. Like last thing you want is what I'm seeing on the screen. What is that? A, a receptacle inside a sink. Like you, you can see what I see, right? Like I sure hope that's a joke. I hope so. I truly do. Um, either that or that's the incinerator, the, the, you know, garbage disposal, you plug it in there. I don't know what to say. That's, I mean, that is just the big end one. The, okay. That's that, real. I've seen those a million times. Okay. Like if I had a dollar for each one of those, Mike, I'd have your money. <laughs> like I have a lot of money. I'm joking. I'm joking. I'd be helping people in trouble. This box has too many wires into it. Actually also has a bell connector or a 12 volt in there too. Yeah. Is that it's probably a doorbell transformer, 16 volt, could be a 12. Um, yeah, actually, that box may actually be big enough for the amount of wires going in because that looks like it's a four by four, maybe a six by six. But um, I any clips on the wires. Uh, looking at this, you can tell it wasn't done by a professional. It's nope. very sloppy. Uh, but yes, this is something we're used to seeing. Mm -hmm. Remember years ago? There's another one. Okay, so talk about this for a second. Wow. Okay. So I have no idea what they were trying to do, but someone used your uh, famous duct tape there uh, to, to mark the wires, which is good. Okay. You got open air connections. Looks like one line is knob and tube um, under the white wires there. It looks like it's knob and tube and they just tapped in. Uh, that's an electrical fire just waiting to happen. There's a reason. It's waiting to happen. There's a reason why insurance companies no longer insure knob and tube, and it's because the wires are so old. They can't take the loads we put on them today. Nope. It is truly a fire hazard. More than likely, it's been manipulated over the years by Joe, Harry, Mary, and Terry that may have bought that house and made changes, and nobody really knows. So There's, there's no way that you take a home from 1920 and they haven't done a bathroom renovation or a kitchen renovation. So have they tampered around with the wiring? Chances are high that they have. How do they do it safely? Like, I haven't found one. You and I came up with an idea years ago. It was a test and troubleshoot program. And I really tried to tell people about this and encourage all electricians out there in the United States, Canada. I don't care if it's Australia because my shows are on the world. Yeah. Do a test and troubleshoot if you're ever worried about your electrical. It's only going to cost maybe, what, 600 bucks maximum to come in. Take a look at the whole house. Create a map and say, okay, here's what I found. Here's what needs to be fixed. This is safe. This is not safe. Here's what needs to be done right away in case you don't have enough money. Yeah. Simple advice, correct? I, I offer it to my clients all the time. Anytime that somebody picks up the phone and calls me, I'll take the time. I'll ask the questions. There are certain things that I can help out over the phone. Then there's certain things that until I take out my tools and start testing from circuit to circuit, no one's going to know what's wrong. So is it going to cost you money? Well, of course, someone's putting on their tool pouch and going to be doing some work. Will they be fixing anything? Not really. 
They're going to be giving you a checklist of exactly what needs to be done and minor fixes will be done. Make sure the connections are nice and tight. Install new devices so they look pretty. But the wiring behind the wall. So this would be perfect for anyone buying a house to do a test and troubleshoot right after they've had a home inspection and there's possibly an electrical issue. Hire Frank. Hire any type of Frank out there to do a test and troubleshoot to give you the advice you need before you purchase that house. Yeah. That's simple, right? Makes sense. You're spending, you know, in this area, you're spending a million dollars for a home that's going to need a hundred grand. Like it's 1.1 million minimum. And you're not going to worry about plumbing, electrical roof. Like you need to worry about these things. Home inspect home inspections are very, very important. And you want something detailed, spend a little more. So we have a, a question here from Christine. And she has asked, any advice for someone considering getting a whole house generator? We are up on a ridge in NC. Not sure where that is. So it would be uh, North Carolina. North Carolina. Oh, sh I should know that. I love North Carolina. South Carolina. I filmed in both areas. Uh, it just didn't click into my head. So a whole house generator. I'm the guy that tells everyone, if you can afford it, get it. Because you never know when the power's down. You never know what the hell can happen out there besides a pandemic. I mean, there was times even here we were shut down for five to eight days. No electrical. Without a generator, you lose everything, especially if it's cold, frozen. You're going to have problems at home. Why not do it? How much money? Generator, generator oh. makes sense. Um, you can do from a small little portable generator just that will take care of the necessities in the home or you can go into the bigger. It all depends on price. It all depends on how much money you want to spend. We so you can back up the entire the, home. Let's go from the minimum. Let's do a minimum one that just does essentials, we'll call okay. it. Okay. We'll call that something then, like that is just a, it's just something like that. It's just like a small little portable. Let's take that champion that we've used a few times on your show. That little champion guy plugs in on one end. The other end, we'll put the mail end that will end up going on the home. From there, it goes into a little panel that would be beside your main panel. And only the the essential oh, loads. Freezer, uh, some lights in the house, right? Correct. So that, that would be about how much? That there, roughly, you're talking twelve to $1,500, and then you need to buy your generator. Okay. So, so your so generator again. So it's going to cost you, let's call it $2,500. Anywhere from $500 plus. So right. it's something to look into, I totally recommend it. And we should be prepared to be self-sufficient, including growing our own vegetables, which I do. Andrea, what is a whole house generator? It's a generator that backs up the entire home. So um, around 15K, is that correct? Yeah, there, there's up to 22K that we can do. Then you get into the liquid cooled, which they're bigger units. Generally speaking, gives you about 100 amps. So it's not really... Something that will back up an entire home, you're talking a lot more money. But what we see in residential is about 100 amps, roughly. Um, we've used it on your jobs a few times. Um, more than enough power. Is it enough for you to be cooking you know, Christmas dinner and entertaining 50 guests and you're running your generator? Maybe not. Um, well, race, actually it should be because it's, again, based on power consumption. Correct. So on. If your heat's on good, you have a hot tub running, we can go on and on. If you have all that going, you can bypass that 100 amp, and that's when the thing is going to shut down. It's going to be a problem. Exactly. So, but again, education is the key here. It's not in which – look, at, just use what you need. Don't go crazy. Don't – if the whole house generator will run the whole house, it just won't yes. run it all at once. We don't want to be using the hot tub and having the AC running at the same time if we're on generator because we're going to be making that motor work extra hard. Think of your car and you're going up a hill. It's going to take more gas to get you up the hill. Same idea. That generator's running, providing you power. That's a good point. Pamela, she's uh, – oh, I just lost it. Let's see. Can I get Pamela back? Pamela, she's watching from Louisiana. Hey, Pamela. You gotta love this, people everywhere. Okay, here's Paula. I have one. My doorbell is busted, and how can I fix it? Do I need to call an electrician? Okay, so doorbells are tricky. It works on low voltage, 16 volts, generally speaking. Um, is it something you can do it yourself? The answer is yes. It the problem is it may end up being the actual doorbell, like the push button outside. 
the wire that goes from the push button to the actual chime. It could be that the chime is gone. From the chime, now we have the transformer. So the problem can be anywhere at those three or the wires in between. Um, Here's my advice. Try it. You're not playing with major electrical here. It's very low voltage. You're not agree. hurt. Go ahead and try it. And if you can't do it, then you call an electrician to come in and fix it. That's it's really that simple. But anything that we can actually try to touch, we should. Yes. Uh, and then there's things we shouldn't touch. Like, honey, will you take that wall down in between the kitchen and the living room? Uh, don't do that. That's really not smart. Odds are it's a load bearing wall. Frank, it's always fun talking to you. The last thing I'm going to ask you is I'm working on my deck. I got a little bit of electrical. I want to add some receptacles and everything. You know I can do it, but I'm going to call in a professional, and that's you. So if you don't mind, I'll get you a beer and dinner, and we'll do this one day soon. Okay. So uh, this weekend, next weekend, when are we thinking? Uh, maybe next week. All right. No problem. I'll give you a call. I'll have my people call your people. Thanks, buddy. Uh, have well, a great day. Well, thanks for being here. All right, this has been fun, but now we're going to get into something that actually is really close to my heart. It's everything that I'm about right from the beginning. We have this wonderful lady. She lives about two hours north of Ottawa, and I would like to speak to her right now. Christy, how are you? Hi, Mike. Right, Christy. Now, you do live two hours north of Ottawa, is that correct? Yes, I'm, I'm two hours away from Ottawa. I'm in Laurentian Hills. Laurentian Hills? Okay, I've heard of that area. Yeah, Chuck now, Trevor. you hired a contractor. I'll tell you what. Tell me your story. All right. So I was in a great position where um, we were given an option through work that we could pull our pension, so our, our investment in our pension. And um, oh. I did that. It worked out for me because after speaking to my financial advisor and investing most of it, uh, my home was in need of repair. So I had some leaking in the ceiling, in the kitchen, and in the living room uh, over the winter. So I knew it would be a good investment to put it back into my home. And there were some other things here uh, that I, I wanted to have done also. So we had gone ahead and, um, you know, I started asking around, talking to people that I knew. A friend of mine from work had an individual who was doing some work at his home and uh, recommended him. So that's how that relationship started. I'm, I'm from Northern Ontario, I'm from Blind River, so I've been here about 10 years at the same company. I don't know a lot of people though, uh, I have no family in this area, so um, just a few friends from work. And, you know, because if this had happened in my hometown, you know people, you know. Uh, we had a small town, you that's know cool. Of people, right. right. So in this case, uh, so I met with him and his wife. He'd done a walkthrough through the house. He understood, you know, very jolly guy. You know, he understood what it is I needed and could see my vision. Uh, so we decided on him getting started sometime in December because he could do the interior work. There was a basement to be finished. There was an upstairs. Our main bath needed to be done. You're talking and, a lot of work here. And yeah, the roof, obviously. You yeah, have roof. and the roof. You're right. Okay, yeah, there's my home. The bungalow. So, so really... Um, I had them get started right away on the basement and um, you know, as we started getting into the spring, uh, he was just starting to wrap that up. Christy, let me stop you. Did you sign a contract? Yes, uh, we did. We had a contract. Okay. What was the total price? 70, just over $70,000. Okay. I'm hearing basement. I'm hearing bathroom. I'm hearing roof. He was going to start inside the house in December continue. How much down did you get this contract? So I paid him $20,000 in the month of December when he started. Okay, uh, right at the beginning? Yeah. Okay, he started work. Did he do work? Yes, he did. Okay. Yeah, what he, did did some, he did some work in the basement. So he started renovating the basement. Like, so it was framed in, but he, you know, he put a subfloor down, laid the flooring. Um, drywall paint you know he did a bathroom so i have a stand-up shower and toilet and vanity so did he did permits? those things did you get permits i expect he would have gotten permits you should and he's supposed to because he's the professional you unfortunately Christy, take the blame no matter what 
while he's there, he's responsible. But it's your home. So right. it's your it's your problem. So if he leaves, because it sounds like he's gone, you now have a problem. He's touched electrical, he's touched plumbing, hopefully not structure. So let's get back to he's done a little bit of work. He framed downstairs. He did do a bathroom. How far did he get? So he did um, the, the what's left in the basement is a there's a Van Moore system, like a system for conditioning the air in the home. OK, so the box, the unit itself is there, but there's piping that's not been hooked up and the electrical that it's not it's not hooked up essentially so i have that system in the basement there's some heating vents so i've only got one heating vent for the for the whole basement there's like a little small bedroom the bathroom and the rec room space so he disconnected the heat run duct runs is that right what am i looking at here? yeah so that's upstairs in the girls bedrooms so each of my bedrooms uh there's two bedrooms upstairs for my daughters and there's there were holes put in the walls there. It looked um more vents. I think he put some more vents. Roof in. vents? Yeah, more vents. They're called more vents or something like that. Oh, you put that in the attic space? Yeah. So he'd started to do that. It looks like he's done some work. How much money did you give him total? Just over seventy thousand dollars. So you've given him the total amount and he didn't finish anything. Is that what you're telling me? Yeah. Part of that, uh, part of that money actually came from my insurance company too, because with the leaking that I had, the leaking I had in the living room and the kitchen, um, they'll they'll fix the damages inside, but we knew it was the roof that had to be done. So uh, this contractor actually worked with my insurance company to do up an estimate for the work that he would do, like the flooring, you know, the drywall here, uh, things like that. And um, okay. the insurance oh. company paid them too. <laughs> On top of what you give them? Uh, that's included in the, the just over 70. Okay, so between you and the insurance company, he's got about yeah. $70,000. He did not complete anything. When was the last day of work? Hmm. I would say the last time he was here was in September. So a long time ago. Yeah. A long time ago. Yeah. And where are you now? So um, it took me a while. I'll, I'll be honest with you, Mike. It took me a while to recover from this. Okay. You took money from your pension. Yes, um, I did. You made investments in something else. Is that correct? Yes. And then you also worked on the house to try and upgrade your home and make it work more money. Good correct. for you. Good for the future. Right. And uh, was the roof fixed? No. Okay. Basement's no, not so fixed. Normally, yeah, it really started. It really started going sour. I think when um, you know I'd had surgery and everything was supposed to be done when I when I was recovering, and uh, I said to him, "Look, stop what you're doing." Like there was a lot of um, you know putty on the walls. Like you know when you put putty and you sand it down, there's a lot of that work happening around here. And you know we were into September, and I said, "Look, buds, we need a roof before the the snow flies. So stop what you're doing inside the house." and uh, and get the roof on and um and that's when you know he stopped coming around and finally we sat down and had a conversation i'm and curious yeah uh, yeah and he uh, just told me that uh you know the way things were for him is he was in debt he was he had a lot of debts and he was behind and he was looking to declare bankruptcy so and that was it and then he left so he just said goodbye to you. You didn't matter anymore. He got all the money that you both agreed on and he didn't even come close to finishing. So what I think, what I think this was is, you know, I, I gave him money that allowed him to sort of get ahead a bit maybe, or get himself out of the red. And then, you know, he was doing work even while he was here, he completed a renovation at a house down the street from me. So I think he was relying on other work in order to, complete the work that he'd committed to doing here um what really did it for me because i was in i was in shock you know i called the police i didn't know really what else to do before i talked to lawyers because he started work on your house it isn't fraud anymore uh they're gonna so, tell you you got they're gonna tell you you got a higher lawyer don't yeah. look so it. i did and you're still not gonna win anything nope <laughs> it's gonna cost you money this yeah. is something we need to learn in life 
And this is why I wrote five books. This is why I do a television show around the world to help people just like you, Christy, that there are guys out there that are not thieves. They're just not good guys. They're just, you know, he's, he said it to you, I'm down and out. And now I'm going to leave you hanging out to dry. Yeah. Nothing is going to happen to him. You are now hurting financially. You now need more money to finish what he's done. And more than likely, whatever he has touched that he shouldn't have needs to be fixed. And I'm talking electrical or plumbing. So I am sorry this happened to you. This is what drives me nuts. This is what I hear every single day. Do you know I could do – there's only one me, right? I, I can't I know. I do a million a year. This is happening. Yeah a million people a year and it has to stop what i'd like to see christy i'd like to see some police action that makes sense because if you steal a pack of gum you can go to jail but you take right. seven grand from someone didn't really mean to didn't do anything proper didn't get permits and then walk away how come there's no consequences right something there's no recourse do me a favor. I want you to stay in touch with me. I want you to find out if he's working in the area or whose house he worked at. I want you to ask them questions. Did this happen to you? Did he do this? Right. And if you want, right now, what's his name? What's his name? What's his name? His name is Don Parsons. Okay, everyone out there, watch out for this guy because right. we don't. Thank you so much for sharing your story with me. I want you to keep smiling. Don't let it get to you. Life is short, and we can't let it harm us anymore. But please learn from it. Stay in touch with me, okay, Chris? Right on. Thank you Thank so much. Thank you, Mike. Keep smiling. Okay. You know, this is, uh, it doesn't change, does it? It just keeps going. This is, this is something that doesn't stop in my world. And I thought by now this would have stopped. There's some things I'm working on for the future of everyone, that this does come to an end, that no one can do this. It's taken time. I'm going to keep doing this. I'm not going to give up. I want to thank everyone, and I want to say happy birthday to my granddaughter, Callie, who is one year old today. She is so cute. There she is right there. Sherry and Blake, the last year, has flown by from them. And I told them, she's going to be one soon. She's going to be 20 soon. Watch out. This is what happens. I mean, I was 22 not too long ago. What am I now? I don't want to talk about it. But come see me next week because we're going to be back with Allison. We're going to be back doing all kinds of things. I'm going to see if I can make this even bigger. Thank you so much. Keep making it right.